The latest episode of The Mandalorian, Chapter 12, titled The Siege, gave us not only a fantastic episode of the second season so far, but also a new look at what our main series villain, Moff Gideon, is actually up to. Does he still have the asset? Yes, our source confirmed it. And we will be ready. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Star Wars Now. Today we'll be discussing The Mandalorian, specifically Moff Gideon's intentions and evil plans. Also what he's likely working on in the season. Chapter 12 gave us a hint and a sneak peek of what he and his Imperial Remnant forces are up to, but what exactly is it and what does it mean not only for our heroes but also the Star Wars galaxy as a whole? Now is a great time to be a Star Wars fan, so join us by hitting that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself and the Star Wars Now team. We're super excited to keep you up to date on the latest Star Wars news, lore and more. You're on social media and so are we, so follow us for the latest updates via the links in the video description. During Chapter 12, Din Djarin aka the Mandalorian, Grief Karga and Marshal Cara Dune, as well as trusty sidekick Mithril, infiltrate the somewhat low-key Imperial base on the planet Navarro, believing this base is simply left over from a fallen Imperial era. This is later revealed to not be the case, as it's actually a science laboratory belonging to Moff Gideon and his Imperial remnants. Din Djarin believes Moff Gideon is dead, after his fight with him in Season 1's final episode, Chapter 8. He and his companions find that this is not the case after walking into a laboratory room containing failed experiments. A message from scientist, Dr. Pershing, reveals that Moff Gideon is very much alive and kicking, and seems to be working on using midichlorians to transfuse into other individuals. These midichlorians are harvested via blood samples from the child, who happens to be Force-sensitive. Rewinding time for a quick moment, originally tasked by the client and Dr. Pershing, who were working for Moff Gideon, Din Djarin retrieved the child and delivered him to the client's compound on Navarro. Later on, after a change of heart, Din breached the Imperial compound and would find Dr. Pershing experimenting on the child. Though the doctor doesn't reveal the only reason the child is still alive is because of him, and thus the Mando spared him. While that may be true, and this Imperial Doctor might have the child's best interests at heart, he still extracted a sample of a child's blood, containing midichlorians, which would later be used for Moff Gideon's experiments in this other Navarro facility. But how does this all tie together, and why does Gideon want midichlorians? Doesn't everyone have them? Well yes, however those of high midichlorian counts were typically force sensitive, therefore able to eventually use powers of a force through training. Blood tests were used to estimate the number of midichlorians in a subject's cells. For example, Anakin Skywalker, aka the Chosen One, possessed the highest known count in galactic history, over 20,000 midichlorians, surpassing out of all other potential Jedi at the time, and even Grand Master Yoda. It's clear that Moff Gideon is attempting to transfuse blood that has a high midichlorian count from a child to other subjects. We see in his laboratory, when Din Djarin and his companions breach it, that there are failed experiments in the tanks behind them. There are likely ones who reject it or could not handle the transfusion. Personally, when I first saw the tank, I was concerned that we were having another Palpatine story, with failed clones or something along the lines of that type of story. Luckily, the ending of Chapter 12 introduced us to Moff Gideon's Arkans class command cruiser, which is also housing another part of his experiment and likely evil plan that likely these two link together in some way. On board the cruiser, after his officer gives him a status update, we see Gideon stood in another laboratory type room. As scientists work away, tall black armoured figures stand in alcoves, seemingly deactivated or rather not alive in the first place. Fans of Star Wars Legends might connect with dots immediately, as did myself, these look exactly like Dark Troopers. The Star Wars video game, Dark Forces, introduced Dark Troopers who were advanced battle droids, but also infantry exoskeletons that featured heavy plating that resembled the armour of Stormtroopers, as well as being outfitted with powerful weapons, jump packs, and more for increased flexibility and tactical advantage. Primarily seen in the extended universe, these troopers came in three phases. Phase 1 was simply a skeletal droid, Phase 2 was more advanced, and Phase 3 which was the main unit but never fully developed. A Phase 3 prototype was used by program creator General Ra Mok against Kar Kotan to little effect. While in Legends, the Dark Trooper project was eventually destroyed, costing the Empire billions in credits, the project did not explore the idea of transfusing midichlorians and by extension, the Force into these troopers. It's possible that Moff Gideon's plans are using elements of this type of story and creating its own. Though there was something similar, the Dark Jedi of Zam Karth commanded several Dark Troopers, or Troopers using that name, which had been empowered with the dark side of a force. While little detail could be found on the subject, as this was written before George Lucas introduced midichlorians to the Star Wars galaxy, 
I think empowered could easily be associated with transfusing midichlorians and the force into a subject, therefore making them what this is. While we strongly think that Moff Gideon's plans eventually involve creating some sort of forced hybrid dark trooper, it's likely his plan and ultimate goal is not yet fully complete. Dr. Pershing mentioned in his transmission to Gideon that they lacked a donor with a high enough M count, like the child, with his recommendation being to suspend the program. Pershing also mentioned that he feared the volunteer would meet the same fate as the failed test subjects if they proceeded with the transfusion. It's interesting a volunteer is mentioned. This might not be the child the doctor is referring to, and someone else, as he mentions the child separately when talking about donors of M count, when referring to transfusions. While fearing, he mentions not disappointing Moff Gideon again, while suggesting and asking that they need access to the child, who likely has a very very high M count given he displays the force and can clearly use it right now. So there we have it, Moff Gideon is harvesting beings and midichlorians to transfuse into prototype soldiers it seems perhaps to strengthen his position in leading what little remains of the Empire, specifically his Imperial Remnant forces. Given the majority of the Galactic Empire's remaining forces left for the unknown regions by this time, under the command of Grand Admiral Ray Sloan, Gideon is likely to command one of the last and largest Imperial forces. To strengthen his position, it makes sense that the Moth is working on evil projects like this, and that he is well aware of what beings of midichlorians can do. But how does all of this link together? Well, I feel we do need to mention my other theory, one myself and several others in the Star's fandom share, that being Moff Gideon is trying to make himself force sensitive. Think about it like this, this is a man who took part and is perhaps largely responsible for the Great Purge of Mandalore, he also wields a Darksaber, one that is associated with Mandalore specifically. Originally a force sensitive Mandalorian ruled Mandalore with the Darksaber in hand, as a symbol and personal weapons of the Mandalorians. Currently, Gideon has one element of this somewhat. While this idea stands, it does bring us closer to attempting to understand Gideon's end goal, which we currently don't know. But what is the end goal for Gideon? To understand and make more speculation about that, I think we'll need to wait longer. Hell, personally I think this experiment could potentially lead to what would become Snoke or something like that. You know cloning a being while also transferring a midichlorians, but we need to wait and see how the rest of the second season of Mandalorian pans out. Personally, I think it'd be kind of dangerous to link to the sequel trilogy right now, but I don't know, that's a discussion for another time in my opinion. For now, it's clear that Gideon is attempting to transfuse midichlorians into this new type of Imperial soldier. If it's Dark Tube related, I'm all for it. Either way, I'm all for it to be honest, as I just love it when Moff Gideon turns up in the show. Actor Gino Esposito does a real fantastic job in portraying this evil yet mysterious character. I personally can't wait to see how he duels in the upcoming episode, potentially facing Ahsoka Tano in lightsaber combat. We'll need to wait and see for more. Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian arrives on November 27th, with being written and directed by Dave Filoni. I'd expect Ahsoka Tan to appear if I were you, as this is going to be one exciting episode. The plot of The Mandalorian is only getting thicker, with the world building getting even more in depth. Do you have thoughts on this Mandalorian theory video? Make sure to share them with us via the comment section below. You can also follow us on social media such as Twitter and Facebook. Be sure to tweet us your theories and comments, because if you're talking about Star Wars, then we want to hear about it. Hit that subscribe button to stay true to the Force, but for now, I've been Captain Jack here on Star Wars Now, and we'll see you next time. May the Force be with you.